it just never seemed to click, but whatever. Yeah, um, eventually we got there. Took some time. Well, we had to literally little, yell at him. Yeah. Uh, get the fuck we to the mic. To do that multiple times. But, uh, yeah, that, that, that's kind of normal fare for us now. Yeah. So, hello, kitties. Welcome. Uh, Luke's being creepy. How you guys doing today? Yeah. Uh, it all floats down here. I mean, uh, yeah. I all mean, right. he lives in a fucking sewer. I don't know what he <laughs> expects, man. I mean, but. Come play uh, with us. No, fuck you. <laughs> Creepy ass little bastards. Creepy clowns. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm not. I'll skip that. Thanks. <laughs> I don't like wading through shit to play with crowns. <laughs> oh fuck that. So, man. How y'all doing this week? Welcome to the Ungodly Geeks. Yeah, I'm Luke. I'm Joe. I think you guys know that by now. At least, yeah, at least again, some of like our regular... argued with Ron. Well, hold on. I'm not. I'm not making oh, an okay. argument. No, I'm just. Um, at least our normal listeners, if we have any regular listeners, you know, yeah, we we appreciate and love every one of you. Seriously, we do. Hey, if you're new, we love you even more. Yeah, exactly. Cause... Just don't tell the old listeners. Yeah, no, you're our favorite. You're our favorite <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Just don't <laughs> you're tell my the favorite deputy. It's like you ever do you have Discord Nitro? Discord Nitro now, and that's their their little thing where it's an optional. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, when they renew and they send you their email, they're like, you're our favorite Discord user. Just don't <laughs> tell the others. It's like, yeah. yeah but you yeah. say that to all the Discord Nitro users. You fucks. I love every time Discord starts up and it says something like gaming related or like, like yeah, yeah, the uh, little, building little, more pylons or something like that. The random flavor text yeah, oh, that yeah. they do. Just, uh, it's a great like, They company. started accepting submissions on their Twitter and Facebook pages. Awesome. So, like, every now and then you'll you'll see one that's popped up where it says, submit it by so-and-so. Yeah. And if it's from Twitter, it'll have their Twitter handle. If it's from Facebook, it'll just have, I think, their first name. I'm not sure how it works, though. Uh-huh. It's like, oh, yeah, that's fucking awesome. I'm sorry I betrayed you, Ventrilo, but Discord's just so much better. Uh, you know, I want to say the same for Skype, but Skype's always been shit. Yeah, no, mm-mm, fuck you. Skype is what I... It got I, worse when Microsoft bought it. Uh, Skype was what I left, left for Discord. Discord's been yeah. fucking incredible. I, you know, I'm a paying user, mm. so I, I I sometimes feel a bit of entitlement, even though I shouldn't, because paying is entirely voluntary. Yeah. But when it doesn't work, it does kind of frustrate the hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like, for what it is, for what they offer, it works so well so often, I don't even care. Yeah. Like, I I'll, know. I'm, uh, I'm still, like, barely meddling in it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, half the time... I mean, there's all the time I'll be messing around or I'll see something do something in it. And I'm like, wait, you can, that's, that's really cool. You can yeah, do that. Yeah, like, yeah. wow. Like, wait, bots do what? Like, what, what? Oh, that's awesome. You can just fucking listen to music here. Kind of got to give you like, like, aren't you kind of glad you don't have to actually run a server? Oh God. Yeah. 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 Like I started a server just to have a place where I could uh, chat with somebody who just also got it. Right. And I'm like, I, I don't know how to do anything other than, ooh, I can put a picture here and change the name here. And I mean, that is it. You want to you want to invite them to the other server, man. Feel free. Oh, yeah. I, I'm always happy. I'll, I'll fucking keep running things. See, it's 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 really similar to IRC. So, yeah. And I had plenty of experience doing that. So for me, it's like IRC, mm-hmm. but with a clicky interface. So it's so much fucking easier. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, I had experience with uh, AIM chat rooms. Right, you know, it's a little bit better, dude. You know, for like a real quick news story, because that's what we're doing today. We're gonna a little talk bit of about news, a little bit of news, and then we're gonna discuss a movie. Um, AOL's killing AIM. Yeah, finally, like, finally, like people still used it. I was, I went and logged into my AIM about I don't know a year, maybe maybe even longer. It's been a long time, but I logged into it just to see. Yeah. And like immediately, the first thing I hear is like the little jingle. My alert tone was like a Lincoln Park song intro, oh, and like I saw a so fucking like cringy. Comic Sans was my text. My away messages. Oh god, it was so cringy. Fucking immediate uninstall. <laughs> one of the one, I, one when I read that AIM was closing down, my my ag- exact reaction was, "Wait, it's still around." Yeah, like I abandoned my AIM probably. I see it's 2017 now, so I'm I'm gonna say. Back in 2010, I consolidated all of my usernames under one email address, mm-hmm. and it, it, everything since then is derived from that. Unless I'm forced to make a different kind of username, so when I when I did that, I used AIM for approximately a year and a half after I did that. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, you ever heard of Trillion? Trillion's a yeah, it was really, a... really. It's still around too, and it's yeah. a, it's still a really, really, really nice chat client. 
but it doesn't support as much as it used to because a lot of services have shut down. I used to use it for Skype um, because it was better than the official Skype interface by a fucking mile. Mm-hmm. And I used to pay for the Trillion Pro that they had, which was really, really nice. It, it removed the ads and it gave you theming options. And some of the themes that you got were really fucking cool. But, um, yeah, I, I, I used that. And, like I said, it was about the middle of 2011, maybe early 2012. I abandoned Trillion, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it, Skype killed support for it sometime around that air, sometime in that time frame, uh, because they killed off their API or whatever, whatever. However, um, Skype was being accessed by Trillion, however, Trillion, the the Skype libraries that let them access it, they, Microsoft killed it off, and I'm like, oh well, whatever, I don't care anymore. So I abandoned Skype, I abandoned Yahoo, I abandoned uh, <laughs> oh god Yahoo, I abandoned <laughs> Yahoo <AIM>. answers. <laughs> I I dropped to basically using the dedicated Skype. Um, because there was a way to block the ads uh-huh. uh, that was dead simple, cost you nothing, and it made the made Skype a million times better. Even though Skype has always been fucking awful, mm-hmm. um, so I, I just I dropped down to using just one thing, Skype. And uh, at the time, it was Google Talk, and it eventually evolved into Google Hangouts, which I still use to t- today. But that was it. I had Skype and Google Talk. Yeah, and Facebook because everybody has Facebook. Messenger's kind of taken over my messaging. Yeah, yeah, a like, Messenger, Discord, and pardon me, the occasional WhatsApp. Like yeah. I, I'll, I'll kind of use WhatsApp a little bit too because I got people who live like in the Netherlands or people who live in Germany that I'll contact over that. Um, and aside from that, that's it, Messenger. Mm-hmm. And but yeah, I I didn't know AIM was still a thing <laughs> until I read this past week or maybe it was a week before that AOL was finally shutting it down. I'm like. Wow. Yeah. Um, but uh, well, another thing I'm I'm actually surprised to find out is that ICQ is still around. ICQ. ICQ was a, a, a sort of like IRC, but instead of usernames or networks, you had like it was it was a, a central thing, kind of like yeah. AIM. But you instead of usernames, you were given a number. Uh, I have no okay. fucking idea what my ICQ number is. <laughs> so it's a little bit more anonymity to it. Or... Uh, sort of, yeah, yeah. Okay, in a way. Yeah, people had to add you by your ICQ number. Mm-hmm. And it's a little flower symbol. D- did Nintendo buy them and that's how they started their fucking friend code bullshit? Oh, no. <laughs> they went, oh, that's the you know fucking what? online uh, I, I would say, we want to emulate. I would say friend codes are better than ICQ numbers. Oh, okay. No, I, I would say I, I, I prefer friend codes over ICQ numbers. Jeez. Um. Anyway, we got we got topics to talk about. We're yeah, seven, yeah, yeah, we're we eight got, minutes actually, in, and we've said nothing. I mean, you know, aim is important back in the day, back when my looking at my MySpace. So, uh, crawl for news. In um, my skin. It was uh, doon, doon. I can't remember what the in, in the song was. Maybe it was that one. Oh God, I don't remember. Doesn't I matter. Know. Move on. Yeah. I, <laughs> Before uh, we get into a nostalgia, rant. nostalgia cringe. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, I guess we can start off with, like, you know, continuing with, you know, what you would expect from these kind of companies, oh, yeah. video game news. A, a sort of um, update on our last podcast where we talked about companies that are, are sort of taking a um, an anti-consumer shit. stance. Taking a shit on the consumers, too? That That's pretty much the same thing. I just said yeah. it way more nicely. Yeah. Which is unusual. Usually I'm the one. Yeah, oh, I'm just being brutally honest with them right. because they tick me off. Um, we got Activision's patent on man. selling microtransactions using matchmaking process, manipulating people right. through their matchmaking to sell microtransactions. Yeah, um, absolutely garbage. Let me let me let me tell you guys how it works here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do it quick. Yeah, it's real. It's actually really simple. Mm-hmm. Let's say you got two players. You got an ex- a super experienced player at a game who's put money and time into it. He's got real high-level items. And then you have a junior player, a newer player. The idea is they pair these two together and try to offer the junior player, the lesser player, the ability to buy some of the items that the greater, the, the, the more experienced veteran player has. Yep. That is all there is to it. That's literally is it. And it's just, it's, it's scummy. It's oh, yeah. really fucking there's, scummy. There's more insidious things where they'll... Apparently, some way try and calculate <clears throat> guns and things you're likely to want. Right, it match you with someone with that equipment. Right, that will most likely beat the tar out of you because they are a higher level, higher experience. Unless of course, and it's if a, possibly paid money. Unless of course it's a co op game, in which case they're just going to completely outclass you and oh yes, killing yeah, enemies. Yeah. Then again, that can work to your advantage too. But still, yeah. like that's that's a shitty scummy you, thing. Yeah, most likely, I, I think the big thing will be when they do it with um, uh, opposing. 
uh, teams yeah. versus uh, player versus player because – you know, you're getting killed by that same gun over and over. I want that gun. How do I get that gun? Oh, yeah. I have to grind, you know, in 900 headshots with this right. crappy pistol. Or, or I can pay I can him just 10 pay bucks. Him 10 bucks. Yeah. Well, you I, add yeah. in fucking loot boxes to that in yeah. random chance, and you are literally just printing money yeah. from these people. And like you, you're preying on on people that are vulnerable, people that are weak, people that are are going to fall for that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, it, and it's really young young people. Oh yeah, young younger guys or or just people who have nothing really going on for them. Yeah. Or like you're preying on the disadvantage and the weak. Like oh god, I got to get this. Oh god, I got. You know, it's really scummy. Mm-hmm. It really fucking is. And it's like, oh well, thanks Activision. Now to their defense, and I hate I hate to actually do this, but to their defense, they have claimed and it's. Shown that they're not. It's just a patent. It's a that patent they're right for. now. It is. They're just. They're just applying for this patent yeah. for this idea for this concept for this method of, of selling things to people. So they're not using it in anything yet. Mm. It's not being used yet. It's just something they want to patent. But the fact that someone sat down and thought all this out of we can absolutely milk these people. Yeah. Um. And then they went to the step of going and getting a patent. And now they're saying, "Oh yeah, no, 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 we're not. Don't worry, we're not doing we're this. We're not using it. We yet. just, we, we, yeah, we just want the idea. We yeah. want, we want to say, we thought of this. This is our, this oh, yeah. is our thing. They got it first, and I'm sure the guys over at EA and Warner Brothers and other companies are going, fuck, yeah. Why didn't we think of that? God damn it, they beat this us. Goes, this is a great fucking idea. This goes hand in hand with what I talked about um, last week." With uh, EULA for yeah. um, Shadow of War, yeah. where they're going to start directly advertising these things directly to the people, direct to the players. Like what you might, hey, you know, we noticed you're having a little problem with that uh, that that boss right there. If you spend tw- uh, four ninety nine on this loot chest, you can get these items that'll help you beat this. Well, it's not four ninety nine. It's you you spend this much of in game currency, this in game premium currency. But in order to get some, you have to oh, spend yes, at least yeah. eight dollars for fifteen hundred credits, even though you might only need two hundred to buy the loot box. Exactly. So it's like, oh, okay. And this is, and honestly, the the sad part is this is where it's going. Yeah, I um, mean, like more and more until people start really. Really hitting these companies and not buying their product, and right. not buying these fucking loot crates and things and the collector's editions and all this other shit. That's where it's going. I don't. I don't. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna defend collector's editions, but I, not. Not hold up. Not. Not the new collector's editions. I'm gonna defend the classic collector. Yeah. Like I. I would. I would say that Doom collect Doom's collector's edition was fine. Because yeah. you didn't get like exclusive in-game content necessarily. You got some like multiplayer skins. Who gives a shit? Mm-hmm. What you got though was a physical, tangible product. You got that big ass Revenant statue, yeah, which oh, yeah. I have in my room. I will defend the same way the uh, Wolfenstein too. Right, it's coming out. I bought the exclusive because it comes with a fucking GI Joe of BJ Blazkowicz. Like it comes, and it that comes fucking classic GI Joe is like I. I still have those. I still collect them. I love yeah. those things. I All cannot right. wait to get this game. Right, like they're. Those collector's editions mm-hmm. are fine. If they're just coming in like an exclusive tin yeah. and they have like, oh, you get extra in-game bonus content. No, 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 no. no, 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 I, no, I no. Even, I'll even it's, forgive when they come in there like the, uh, specific Fallout. I mean it's the same company with uh, um, Spy, well, uh, Bob, Bethesda. Bethesda with Wolfenstein. You know, you get uh, a lunchbox and a bobblehead or whatever. You get whatever tat. Um, I I defend that kind of collector decision. Right. It's the eighteen versions of um, Assassin's Destiny Creed or something or like Assassin's that. Assassin's Creed, yeah, where, where, where like... each of them have a stupid like. Oh, you get more in-game currency, or you get these extra fucking starter skins. Or like, you get these guns early. I, I, I know a perfect example of that's NBA Two K. Oh yeah, NBA Two yeah, yeah. K eighteen, the newest one. The ninety nine. You, you got three. Dollar. Well, there's an, there's another one beyond that. The legendary gold edition. That's one hundred and forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, that's that's right. Ninety nine yeah. was just the cost of the fucking thousand points in game. Oh no, no that's a legendary. That's a legendary edition. Like you can buy the game for fifty nine ninety nine. That's mm-hmm. the base game. If you then there's a legendary edition which is ninety nine ninety nine. I don't. Yeah. I don't even know what it offers because I don't care because you can buy these in the digital version too. Meaning these games do not add physical value yeah like a, like with the aforementioned collector's edition like i said with the doom you get the the revenant statue which i have and it's fucking cool as shit or with your bj black so it's uh you know re- fucking figurine like you get shit with it yeah these are digital games that you download that the only thing you get is more digital shit yeah um like like i said destiny's doing it yeah destiny did it with their 800 different fucking copies 
Um, it, 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 it's straight up. It's just straight up. It's nothing. There's nothing there. There's no actual tangible mm-hmm. value. Which, and a lot of times, part of they come. Sorry, they uh, have the the thing you get is just the expansion pass. Yeah. So you're paying money for content down the road that you've not even seen yet. And I mean, I made that mistake with Battlefield One. Mm-hmm. I thought, hey, I love this game. I'm going to go ahead and buy it. I'll get the expansion pass now. Boom, got it. And I'm like, I'm pretty much done with the game. Yeah. Like, I mean, I I might go back and play it a little bit, but. Right now is the season of games. Yeah. Stuff is coming out rapidly. Yeah. yeah. And I have no intent, no really desire to go back and to unlock new content that, y- you know, I paid for. I've got to do 900 headshots with some fuck rifle and then teabag some like 600 people or some shit like that. Or shoot Absolutely. down an airplane with Absolutely a fucking LMG. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It's like, ridiculous. I get it. I like the challenge. I like having to earn stuff. But at some point, I'm like, I, I, I bought. The extra content. Can yeah. I can I just have to get fifty like fifty kills with one gun, please? I think, I or think just something pretty simple, and I can unlock this gun. Season, I don't want to do the grind. Season passes are terrible. Yeah, on top. Like, yeah, ooh, I, I get mean, the new maps. I gotta say, of all the season passes I've purchased, um, probably the only one that I and I hate that I've purchased them, and I've I've actually stopped purchasing them. Mm-hmm. Um, the only only season pass I felt has been worth it was Witcher threes. Yes, yeah. just because of. Hearts of Stone, amazing piece of fucking work. Literally brought me to tears. The ending, that ending brought me to tears. And then fucking Blood and Wine, which I have not completed yet because there's too much to fucking do. And I kind of burned myself out on those kinds of games. So right now I'm just kind of playing first person shooters and mm-hmm. adventure games. You came in, I was playing Castlevania, Portrait of Ruin on my shield. That's all, that's all I'm doing right now. Yeah. All right, so let's move on from that before yeah. we get too ranty and go off on a tangent. And oh, yeah, that stuff, a... I, it's that, like, you've heard me go off on this stuff before. Yeah. Hate the, I'm hating the industry that I've loved since I was a kid. Yeah, no, like, this is shit we grew up on, and now we've seen it turn from, you know, back in the day you'd pay 80 bucks for a fucking game. You got the game. Yeah. You didn't have to buy additional content. You didn't have, you know. It's no longer about making selling games and making the money off the game. Um, EA's goal, Activision's goal, Ubisoft's goal, they're all, uh, their goal now is to milk for as long as possible, to continue making that money. You know, like Skyrim Uh, and uh, Bethesda. Yeah. Um, which topic, the next thing is EA killing visceral games. Right. They killed a studio that is known for making good single player games experiences yeah I they mean, made the dead space games dead space i mean one and two yeah. and i know you know ron is, is absolutely in love with those games oh yeah i'm same here yeah they like, are amazing. dead space 3 is a pile of shit yeah dead space 3 unfortunately that's where ea came in and said hey you've got a cool thing here um why don't you fuck up the entire economy of the game by making it so people will you know making it so we can spend real money and just buy the upgrades instead of playing the game yeah no i mean and turning it into just a shit store pay pay to win is hugely disappointing oh yeah also forcing in forcing in co-op because that's back when co-op was chic so every game had to have co-op and unfortunately most of them did it badly like i love co-op i'm currently like with a friend of mine um i've been we've been looking for stuff to play co-op that on the weekends and it's now it's kind of hard to find, you know, newer stuff that's still got some co-op play to it. But looking back, I'm like, Oh yeah, they, they did have everything with co-op like, uh, resident evil five. Yeah. Or and army, army of two. Army of two was a great game that yeah. was made to be co-op though. Yeah. Like the resident evil five and dead space three. They kind of did not need it. it. They it was ham fisted. Yeah. The AIs were, were so bad. Yeah. I mean, I, Resident Evil 5 is one of those games where I thought it could have been good. And, oh, yeah, I did, then, too. And I expected it. Started off, it started off fine, and then mm-hmm. they just shit the bed with it. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's, it's kind of like the su- Suicide Squad Syndrome. It starts off <sighs> really good yeah. and just gets bad. Yeah. You, so, you, I mean, you have hope at the beginning, and then, uh, why? <laughs> uh, but, yeah, they so they've killed off Visceral, adding another company to their long list of things developers. They've just, they've just they've, murdered. They've milked a little bit and then decided that, you know what? You made a game that didn't sell 800 copy or 800 million copies, or you didn't make it quite enough back, um, and we can't really use you to make yeah, these I mean, multiplayer just it's, it's, it's garbage n- games. So I remember when EA was good. You're dead. 
When yeah. EA was purely electronic arts, it, when they were when they went by that moniker before they shortened it to EA, they they made some fantastic games. You know, in the Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo era, they made amazing games, and we all loved electronic arts. We used to love Activision too. Activision used yeah. to make great software. Uh, I don't know about Ubisoft. They were they're they're newer than I can remember. I I actually really loved um, the Tom Clancy games. Right, right. They've they again they're they, they are. I'd put them up there with. They used to be a company that. Hey, this is a Ubisoft game. Let's cool. fucking buy it. Yeah, yeah. I mean they, that, that. I mean seriously, back in the day, man. You know, because I I go much further back in gaming than Luke does. Um, back in those days, those sixteen eight bit sixteen bit era, they made great fucking titles. I, one of my favorite Electronics Arts games to this day is still James Pond. James Pond Two. It's a, it's you play a fucking fish or a worm or some shit. Yeah, you play a fish. You can stretch. It's a stupid fucking platformer <laughs> game. I'm looking at him like the fuck. It, but you play a fish. You play as a fish, and it, it, obviously it's a James Bond spoof. And there's that's you know, actually pretty awesome. But it, it is a really good James game. Pond. Yeah, it's ah. called James Pond. You play as a little orange fish. That is that in a is in a fucking suit who walks on his fins and can stretch. I don't know where they came up with the concept. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, but it turned into a great platforming type game. And it's one of those games that I, I remember fondly playing when I was a kid mm-hmm. all over the Sega Genesis because we had it for Sega Genesis. They made it for both, but we had it for, for yeah. the Sega. And they fucked up, man. They fucked up it, since those days. They went the way of away from being you know a developer to a, a publisher, publisher yeah. and then – by chomping up developers, uh, one of the co- one of the companies that I loved was uh, Bullfrog. I've loved um, Visceral. I loved um, Pandemic Studios. I like like there's there's tons and tons of studios that you can go through. Uh, they started 3DO, which means Kingdom made Kingdoms of Amalar, which we've talked about being an amazing right, right, yeah. single player campaign. That well, again, they didn't make Kingdoms of Amalar. They bought um, that that was done by 3DO. Wasn't it? No, 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 no. That was started by Big. It wasn't 3DO. It was another company. If I rem, if I recall the, the story behind that correctly, um, there was a former baseball player who went to a he city wanted and to start. It he was wanted in, to start uh, a game company. It had nothing to do with 3DO. He wanted to start a game company, and they kept giving him money and money, and you know he kept blowing it, blowing through it. The studio he he started did eventually create a really good game. Kingdoms of Amalur is one of the best RPGs I've ever played. Three Eight Studios. Three that's Eight why. Studios. Yeah, not 3D, yeah. 3DO was another dead gaming company. Um, but why? Well, oh, 3DO killed themselves. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> we, we can't we can't blame that EA yeah. on that. Uh, but yeah, like they they created that. They went bankrupt, and EA snatched them up, bought the publishing rights, bought the studio, killed off studio, absorbed some of the people from it. No, well, EA published Kingdoms of Amalur, though. So they, they, they bought them before before the game they, came they, out. They, published, they, they, said, they, they, they bought the publishing rights to it. Yeah. Like, the studio ran out of money, mm. had to close down, and EA bought all of that up. I thought they had... I, I thought EA had them sooner. Like, they did They did have them before the game was done, though. Uh, Yeah, they, they, they okay. bought them, like, right before everything died. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they were still, you know, they they had to make the one game. That's why the game is good. Yeah. Because EA, by the time EA got a hold of them, the game was pretty much complete, and there was nothing else that could be done at that point. Well, EA expected to sell. That was one of those games, and they said um, they did the same thing with Dead Space 3. They said this game has to sell this many copies. Yeah. And in order to be quote unquote um, profitable, it's yeah, like, which might have well have been said quote unquote for you to keep your jobs, yeah, which is what ends up happening, right? Um, and I remember one of their big pushes was with Mass Effect Two, which was coming out right after that game, or right before, uh, right after that game, yeah. Um, if you pre ordered or if you owned both games, something like that, you got armor from the Mass Effect series in that inspired by armor inspired by Mass Effect in right. Kingdoms of Amalar. Yeah, if in, you had Kingdoms of Amalar, you got armor inspired by that in Mass Effect and I loved that because yeah. I loved Mass Effect 2, remember? Mm-hmm. And it was kind of cool to have that extra stuff because it was good. Yeah, and in yeah. Mass Effect, armor didn't matter, so it was just a cool look. You had like this dragon, it was purely it was aesthetics. Awesome. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? It was cool to have a company that it was like, hey, these two different developers, they're owned by EA, but this publisher's being cool and doing cross-promotion stuff. Yeah. Oh, I, I, honestly, I, I thought that, that game would sell 
gangbusters because it was a great RPG. Oh, yeah. And it did, yeah, it was really, really it good. It did pretty well for an RPG, but EA wanted it to make absolute crazy money. It was and one, then it didn't. It's one of those games that like, I, won't, I won't buy from EA. Um, I do have Origin now, though. So yeah. I take their occasional free games. And they, you know, admittedly, Origin has gotten a lot better. Uh-huh. And there are some good EA games out there. I, but uh, that was the last game that I bought from EA that I was like, I am okay. I'm I'm proud yeah. to own this game. I'm okay with owning this game, and I don't know. Um, Titanfall, the the developer Titanfall, Titanfall two. two. I gotta say, I haven't played it yet, but I do own that game. I that's one game I paid full price for, and I'm okay with it. There was a time when we first started this podcast that um, it looked like specifically this year EA was starting to make a turn for the better, uh, and Titanfall two was one of those things because that game came out. There's, I, I don't even know if there's DLC at this point. I don't think so, or if it's all been free. I have no um, idea. I mean, I, 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 regrettably, I don't play it as much as I as I should now. Right. But it came out with a full, awesome single player experience. Right. The multiplayer is fucking fun. Solid. Um, Real solid. solid multiplayer. It didn't have any microtransactions. It didn't have nope. the fuckery nope. that you expect out of EA. And it sounded like EA was like going to be starting to do that sort of thing. Uh, Battlefields, while it has m- stupid fucking loot crates, they weren't you know they weren't terrible. Um, it's then we got the news that you know Battlefront was garbage, but then they said, "Hey, we're sorry, Battlefront Two, all the DLC will be free. The game will come with a single player campaign. It's looking good." And then all this shit now, has come out within now we like see the last. Why month. now we see why they were doing exactly all. exactly they turned it into a pay to win garbage, which we've already. Yeah. We already went all okay. over an episode yeah, of that. Let's let's but, move on from that. Yeah, it's kind of like nope. They are still going to be the fucking crappy company that they've always been. All right. So uh, I, one thing that I'm really excited for, mm-hmm. uh, and we I just found out about it myself uh, last night when I was watching Philly D. Um, fucking Philip. yeah, fucking <laughs> November seventeenth. Yes, Punisher drops. The entire season, of course, that's how yeah, Netflix does Netflix. things, and it's like, oh, I'm so excited! Yeah, finally released the date. It I, I got I, delayed a little bit, I believe, but since they never confirmed the date, right? You know, it doesn't that's matter. My own, uh, uh, I just theory. want it. I, I just want it. That's all. I, I fucking want it. Yeah. Give it to me, Netflix. You know, they're like heroin. They know what they're doing, and they got me hooked. Like, I it doesn't even matter. Um, um, it's 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 it looks so good. The I, advertising, I, the, the the whatever department is doing the, the their marketing, the marketing, oh yeah, their marketing team, fucking triple A. They are you guys are it. just doing so good, amazing. That's one of the few like like obviously shill marketing twitters I will follow yeah. because I love it. The only two are Bioware's Wolfenstein Two and that no because, no no Bethesda. But I'm sorry, but yeah, Bethesda's Wolfenstein the fuck Two is wrong with that's, you, man. That's the B. Um, but <laughs> Wolfenstein Twos and. Uh, yeah, their marketing campaign Punishers. is pretty brilliant. And they're so good. I mean, I, I do take a slight issue with the direction of the story they're going because they're moving it away from him just being a Marine to him being part of a government conspiracy. Yeah, he's had some dealings with the CIA yeah, and stuff. It, it's like... That's nah. not... That's been... Uh, that's kind of... That's not completely unheard of in Punisher comics. I, yeah, I get you. Um, I'm kind of excited to see if this sort of, like, there's a CIA dude who kind of reminds me of uh, a character that was in the Punisher Max, uh, one of the Punisher Max story arcs. Yeah. And I, like I've said before, that's my favorite Punisher line right. is the Max books. And I'm kind of, I'm like, oh man, it, it, kind of they're going to go that way a little bit. Um, there's the female CIA agent. There's a CIA female CIA agent that's a big part in the yeah. most Max book, that Max storyline as well. That she mm-hmm. goes comes back later and stuff. And so I'm not. I, I like that he's still a soldier. Yeah. I don't think they're going to take away anything because they did set that up in the right. second season. Of Daredevil course they too. had. Yeah, they did. I had that same kind of fear a little bit though that right. um, I don't want them to take away. That his family was killed by gang violence, which it sounds almost like they are. Uh, yeah, from what from what I was reading and from what I've gathered, it's mm-hmm. it, apparently it wasn't gang violence. 
Now it, it was it was this it was yeah. this group this this military conspiracy people who did it. Yeah, or, or maybe they paid the gang to do it. Right, like, something they, they did something to get his family there. Yeah, and that ha- happened at and, that time. And it was made. It, it was it was done in such a way that he knew who inside that group of mm-hmm. the conspiracy of folk that he, he knew he knew that was who it was. From what I I've gathered, I, I don't think so because I I think it, he might be finding out as he now. Goes. That, that, yeah, that's very possible. That that but to from, me was the uh, kind of the reveal of the first right right uh, the the daredevil. The ending is when he realized, oh shit, this dude's my old commander's a fucking drug dealing piece of shit. Right, he's the cause of that. I think that is leading into him now. He's got a bigger target. Right, so this is this shadowy. But you know what? I mean. Given how amazing Daredevil was, yeah. Given John Bernthal's fucking performance in season two, it's like mm-hmm. I expect this to be pretty fucking good. Yeah. I even you know I, I I if you give us basically you take what you gave us in Daredevil season two mm-hmm. and you just give that to us in this series, I already know it's going to be good. One thing I do hope, though, because I want I, – I like a longer story. Yes. You could uh, – the Punisher, I, I would understand if the studio said, okay, this is somebody that you you can't you, – you, what are we going to continue doing? He walks into another gangster, you know, another yeah. gang's yeah. hideout and kills everyone. Me, yes. Just continually do that, please. I will continue watching it. Just let him – yeah, just yeah. let him keep give shooting me, gangsters in the face. Give me a season or a couple episodes where he goes to fucking like bumfuck Alabama and kills like crazy rednecks in the woods that are eating people like in the books. Do, do – you know, if you do that, fine. I will consume it. But I get why that would not be where they would want to go creatively. Right. But I really hope this isn't like – this is his major storyline. I, yeah. I hope that this uh, is similar I, to I, a – Yeah, what I hope is it's more of an introduction – yeah, and, exactly. Because I don't want them to take away Punisher, ex- yeah. killing criminals. Yeah, and just an expansion on what yeah. they gave us in their Devil season two. That's, that's, that's what like, yeah. I, we are definitely on the same page there. I want I want more of why he was there, mm-hmm. and more how he got to that point, and just keep it kind of going in that that direction. And then if there is a season two, give us more. Oh yeah, open it up more because there's so much you really can do with the Punisher. So I mean. There's- there's uh, like lots. The max line is long, and there's so many storylines where and, and they get crazy. Don't get me wrong. There's one point where he ends up in like a Russian um, Cold War bunker, yeah. And like this like Russian uh, ex KJB yeah. group is there, and they're trying. And he's like with one um, spec ops guy, and they're trying, and they're like being attacked by fucking crazy Russians that are trying to like overthrow the Russian government. There's a storyline where. He ends up going to Afghanistan because Nick Fury basically uh, begs, like, almost begs him to go. Yeah. And because the CIA had fucked up. And, like, there's crazy storylines, but they'd still go back to he is in New York or wherever he is. And yeah, he's, he's, shooting, he's shooting, shooting down, down gangbangers. Yeah. Or he's shooting down, uh, like, biker gangs or fucking just rapists or murderers or whatever. And shitty, shitty the people. Base, yeah, that's the base of the Punisher. That's that's the part I love most about the Punisher is the these people that you you, you, you know when people can't do do anything about. Yeah, you see, uh, like a um, fucking big time mafia dude get off on a technicality. It's kind of like the Boondock Saints. Yeah, where they the the fantasy is somebody come up and give them the justice that yeah. they're not going to get through the system. Right. And I want. I really hope they still keep that theme with the Punisher. Yeah. And I'm oh, kind of thinking sure. this is going to be like Daredevil season two, where you had the whole Punisher storyline was one half, and the other half was all the Elector stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping that he's you know he's dealing with the CIA shit, but at the same time he's kicking down doors of like just fucking just random everyday neighborhood tr- criminals yeah, type stuff. Dr- yeah. Crack houses and drug de- like drug dens or. Meth, clint, methadone, oh, sex, meth sex place. slave operations, yeah. anything like yeah, that. Human and trafficking, it's just continuing to be the Punisher. Yeah, and you I mean, get we get Micro in this season, who's just uh, he's a central character that's right. just gonna be fucking. I can't wait. All right, fuck yeah, dude. That's and you know what the and we discussed this front earlier. You guys want to know what else November seventeenth oh, yeah. is? <laughs> it's fucking the day Justice League comes out. So it's like Marvel <laughs> just just has to like. Just dig it in there a little bit. I I, I want to say that's also was Netflix. Netflix was <laughs> Netflix was a little like yeah, a little bit. I'm sure. Hey guys, 
We have an idea. Let's fuck with uh, DC a bit. Like, I'm sure they're looking at their schedule like, well, when can we drop it? And they they did this with Daredevil. Mm. Daredevil season two, I think it was, dropped right before either BVS or Suicide Squad. I don't remember, but they gave it like a week. Yeah. And granted, this isn't like... This isn't like them trying to drop uh, Infinity War on top of yeah. um, Justice League. This, to me, is something where it's like it's like they can have that dig, but I don't see any – not many people – nobody is going to like, oh, well, I'm going to save my money by not seeing Justice League. No, no, they're still going to see Justice League. Yeah, they're going to go see Justice League and then you know come home and binge Punisher. Fuck yeah. So I'm, I'm probably going to binge Punisher in the morning and then see Justice League after we record or before we record. Yeah, I'm fucking <laughs> – I'm totally down for that. I don't even yeah. care. Um, I mean, it's it's just funny to me. All right, let's move on to our main topic for the day. We want to talk about – Baby oh, Driver. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Baby Driver, of course, we've, Luke has talked about it before. He's raved about it. Yeah. Um, I finally took the chance to sit down and watch it mm-hmm. um, because it, 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 it holds the honor for being the first movie I've ever bought in 4K. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Luke fucking was raving I, about I, it, I, like a, like a fucking lunatic. A, like I'm telling you guys, when I saw this movie, because you know, like, like I said, oh, I wanted dude, this movie. Dude, you to gotta make money. see it. You gotta see it, man. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, fine. I'll buy it. <laughs> now leave me alone. I'll get. A, I'll watch it when I can. And uh, there was a plan that I had where Ron and I were supposed to watch it like either last week or the week before, but he was unable to. Mm. So I ended up watching uh, the raid, which. Great fucking Another flip. movie I've said, yeah, great, dude, great flip. fucking watch this movie. It's like, um, what did I say it was? It was like, uh, fuck. Uh, I made a really Dread good... Oh, yeah. Meets... Dread meets a... Uh, how did a I... A kung fu movie. Whatever kung fu movie. Kung fu movie. It, uh, you know, Dread meets John Wick. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I actually think I called it a uh, higher amperage jo- uh, Dread, mm-hmm. which it totally was. Like, Oh, Dread ripped the, the fuck off of this movie, but I'm yeah. glad they did because they both end up being amazing. Well, didn't the first Judge Dread come out before this movie? No, no, Dread, the the movie. The remake. Yeah, yeah. that ripped okay, off this. Okay, yeah. We ignore which, by the, the way, original Judge Dread. The remake is fantastic, too. Go watch it if you haven't yet. Anyway, moving on That's to the That's why I hyped this movie up right. is uh, I still feel bad that I didn't see Dread in theaters. Yeah. And oh, yeah. then uh, it come came out on DVD and I saw it and was like, oh my God. Yeah. We yeah. need more movies like this. Yeah. That's kind of the way I felt about Baby Driver. It's yes. the way I felt about um, John Wick. It's like, no, no, no. This is rated Kingsman, R and it's really the fucking original good. Kingsman. Kingsman exactly, the original Kingsman. Yeah. Not the new one. The new one's not, not nearly as good. Not nearly as good, but it's okay. But it's, it's that smaller... A uh, smaller budget film that doesn't get a lot of huge studio push. Yeah. It's not in July or you know uh, aug- I mean, early August or June. It's like it's in a month where normally they put crappy movies, but yeah. you know people you got to see it. They're yeah. amazing. So movies. I mean, like I I can make two statements about this this movie yeah. that I feel completely comfortable making. Um, it's probably the best Sony flick I've seen in years. Mm-hmm. And I really do fully believe it is the best Edgar Wright film I have ever seen. And I've watched almost everything he's done. Yeah. Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz are my favorite, you know, spoof movies ever. Because they're done so well and in such a way that you don't realize they're spoof movies until like the fourth time you've watched them. Oh, yeah. And the depth to them. Yeah. I mean, and that was one of the things I noticed right away about Baby Driver. The first five minutes of the fucking flick. By the way, there are going to be some spoilers, so yeah, be be aware on that. If you haven't seen it yet, turn the pod off now. Go watch well, it. Well, not yeah. It will hopefully we'll try not to spoil too much. Yeah, but, yeah. But I mean, first you're introduced to Baby. He's he's been through some shit, but you don't know that yet. As far as you know, he's just some white dude walking down the street. He's listening to music, and one of the things I noticed, and this was something I I fucking totally appreciated. Um, as he's listening to the song, the song is playing. You, we can all hear it. Mm-hmm. As he's walking down the street, the lyrics are showing up in random spots. Yep. On the like, I, I, it was just a little touch. Oh, the intro was so great. The, the way li- they did it was that. just a little touch, but I noticed it right away, and mm-hmm. it was like, I love this. The cinematography is out of this world. It's some of the best I've ever seen. They don't rely heavily on jump cuts, and they put just little things in there. Mm-hmm. Just little little Easter eggs in a way. And it's it 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 just looks good. It's uh it's mind blowing. And I said it before, the beat of the movie, the fact that everything is in beat with yes. the music, yes. so well. Yeah, I oh my god, like they had to have been like 
the to film this yes. just to get it right must have been a fucking challenge. It had to. It have had been, to be. Man, it's, like, it's a. It's a masterful the way it, like, it it turns out. There's moments where baby is sitting in the car waiting for whatever is going on to finish, and he's just listening to the music. That's his stick. That's what he does. And he's got the windshield wipers moving in unison yeah. to the beat of whatever song he's <laughs> so listening good. to. And it's like, this is such a tiny touch, but it's so oh, great. Yeah. Um, and, uh, even even uh, it, it, that's when it's really obvious. But in the beginning when he's walking, everyone on screen, all the extras, all the background people, yes, all the traffic yes, yes, lights, yes, yes. everything is to that beat. Yep. Absolutely everything. It's it's you watching this movie yeah. is like an experience. Like he bumps into somebody <laughs> – at the crescendo of, a, of, of of part of the song, like he bumps into somebody doing this, you know, he, he moves around somebody, he's dancing, he's like, he, he, it's like it's so good, and every person is, that it pops up is relevant to the lyrics in some way, and it's just one of the, that alone is great. But then you get into the movie and you see the actual action sequences. Oh my god! These car chases, Luke, you dude, you fucking nailed it. These are the best car chases in any movie I've ever seen. Yeah. Period. Ever. I don't know who, what stunt driver they got to do those, but holy crap, this dude or lady deserves all the work they can get. Yeah. I mean, the way he's, you know, he's just shooting around through the traffic and, and I guess they're in a, I have no idea where they are. Uh, it's some big city. Um, I want to say it was LA. Um, cause there, know. there are signs. But yeah. I, I didn't I didn't pay that much attention. This is one of those things I'm going to go back and rewatch. But uh, you know, there, there's like the very first uh, chase where they're getting chased by the police after they rob the bank. A mm. um, spo- little bit of spoilers ahead. A little spoilerish. You know, he's driving a red Subaru four door. <laughs> yeah. um, he's speeding along highway. He notices at the corner of his eye there are two red sedans <laughs> that from the top would look similar to his, and they're being chased by the cops. So he fucking he wings it around. Drifts into the oncoming traffic onto the highway, or drifts into the traffic onto the highway, catches up to them and sits between them. Yep. They go under into a tunnel, and he swings the car around, makes the car that's on his left go into the center lane where he was, and he sits on the left lane. And and he when they like come the up, cup trick. Yeah. Are you fucking. Yeah. Uh, so good. And you know now he's they're shooting out the other end of the tunnel. The copter keeps following the two red cars. He gets off the off ramp and goes to the car garage where they swap cars out. Coast. It's oh, it's so so good. Yeah, they I it's it's a heist movie with chases and stuff where it's like they they looked at all these other great heist movies and I'll even include like the first Fast and well, what it was it like I don't know, the fifth Fast and Furious, whichever one where they fucking drag a bank vault. I liked that one. I I um, don't know. I um the last to- the last Fast and Furious movie I saw was Tokyo Drift. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I I stopped I stopped caring after that. Tokyo oh, Drift wasn't awful, anymore. but it, it it like it got to that point. By that point, it's like okay, this is old. You yeah. guys can how many? What what more can you do with cars that are going fast? Apparently, they can punch rockets and have submarines. And we uh, anyway, let's move on. Fly. I don't let's, know. Let's get back to the movie. But yeah, with Baby Driver, they looked at all these great heist movies and they incorporated. Uh, bits and pieces of what they did, and it doesn't do so much of like the Ocean's Eleven where they don't do a huge amount of setup. They do just enough, and you see the pieces. Um, but then obviously the main focus is on Baby. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, this his driving. It, it, That's key. That is that is the movie. Mm-hmm. Baby Driver. The movie is Says about <laughs> the movie is about him. That, What's your uh, name? And like Baby. one one of the things one of the things that that I do remember um, reading. Well, there was a view on Google Play when, right when I bought the movie mm-hmm. that was complaining about plot development and how the other characters don't get any real development. It's like, but the movie's not about them. No, yeah. It's... You, you, don't need, you don't need the other characters to really be developed. You get just enough from what they give you that that's all you really need. You know, you got Bats played by Jamie Foxx, who, mm-hmm. one of my favorite actors ever. He, he does it fantastically. It's, it's, it's great. Um, it's, I heard one of the complaints I heard early on, yeah, it was specifically with that character and like the fact that he's kind of one dimensional crazy, but he's not played well. I thought he, I thought his crazy no, worked I mean, for me. I thought Jamie Foxx did it well. Yeah, Jamie I Fox, thought he was pretty fucking crazy. Like oh, yeah, I cre- yeah. legitimately creeped out. Like, yeah, there were there no, were no, moments no, where I'm like, dude, what's wrong with he you? He was almost 
um, Joker crazy at some moments, which I don't know. And if when they he says Joker crazy, he doesn't mean Jared Leto. No, no, what Jared Leto <laughs> should have been going for, right? If you want to do a gangster Joker, this yeah. dude, this was it, it, Jamie Fox for the next Joker, scary kind of, and he was just like the things he wanted to do, like uh, walking like, into a convenience store and has the money to buy whatever he's going for, instead fucking guns down the clerk and takes it. Why? Because he's a fucking nut job. And you know what the funny thing is? He killed that clerk over gum. Over gum. <laughs> over fucking gum. Over like gum. 50 cent gum. He could have just taken it and walked out and the yeah. dude wouldn't have done anything. Yeah, no, I mean. But that's the kind of fucked up crazy he was playing and I, yeah. it worked for me. I, I you was got, like, And of course you got John, John Hamm, great actor from, uh, he, he was in Mad Men. He's one yeah. of the leading roles in Mad Men. Um, and he played, he played a guy named Buddy and he was he was great too. Like you didn't need plot development. You didn't need character development from these people was, because he was the one leading them, right? No, no, that was Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey, yeah. Doc, Doc, Doc. Yeah. yeah. No, um, no, no. Uh, Buddy was the other guy. Um, he and, and his uh, wife. Yeah, he and his wife. And then of course you had oh, John Barron Hall playing a guy named Griff. John yeah. Barron thought, I, you know, what? that dude's great. I'll watch him. He was great in it too. Like I liked how short they were in it. Yeah. Um. I like that they weren't, they didn't have to, and it made sense to me when you're doing this kind of heist work, you wouldn't keep these people around no, if no, you have the no, option, no, unless no, they're no. really indispensable, which they all seem pretty much just people who were good with guns yeah, and pe- were very intimidating. People, yeah. Cool that, under pressure. Yep. And that, that's, that's, that's all you needed in mm-hmm. this movie because it was a heist, but it focused on Baby and what he's gone through. Yeah. And he was really the only one that got any decent development. Um, the waitress Debo- Deborah, she got some development. A they all got. Bit. She uh, could have. Yeah. I thought she could have had more, but again, to do more with those other people would have taken away from the core of the movie. Right, which was baby. They didn't, Once again, it they was didn't baby. Stretch it out. They didn't. It didn't drag on too long. It was exactly where it needed to be. Yeah, like the uh, the best way I, I can put it is the plot is important. And there was a little bit of a love thing there, and that's important. It doesn't ever feel ham-fisted. Uh, and while the plot is important, it still feels secondary to what's going on. And I know that may not make sense, but you have it's one of those things where you have to watch the movie, and you're like, I get what he's saying. yeah, Because it really is good. Um, and, like, the first two acts, they set the movie up really well. Then the third act, the ending, like, that, I was on my fucking edge of my seat that entire time. Oh, my God. The, the Like I said, the beginning chase scene is amazing for a just, holy shit, this is really cool. Oh, my God, this is skill. The ending is like, whoa, oh, my yeah. God, oh, fuck, it, oh, God. Like, it was action. It was like, it, like he's, like Joe said, edge of your seat. Oh, my God, what's going to happen next? Oh, yeah. I can't yeah. fucking is he gonna believe get away? this. Oh. oh, my God, oh, God, that's that's got to hurt. Like, it was just fucking great. And the the way it starts what happens and I'm not going to spoil it no no it's no just let's so not spoil good. the ending let's not spoil no, 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 the I'm ending no I'm not going to spoil the cuz like I got the ending is so so fucking far from where it began yeah i it it, it like where it ended i i saw coming after the fact it's like now no that makes perfect sense oh yeah there are little things that happen in the movie yeah that don't seem like you know then don't, don't seem important and then they come back and it's like oh okay yeah 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 it's oh just, good mm. oh man it, seriously it, it's a great flick um yeah, it's a good time i gotta say one of my favorite one of my favorite moments is actually in the beginning that initial car chase scene. They're going down the alley after they they run from the cops, and that fucking garbage truck's backing up, and he hits it, hits the handbrake, and just slides around mm-hmm. it. And, and phew, that that was so fucking cool. I guess the say. driving is so slick early on, man. The, the first. Oh the yeah, first, like I said, whoever whoever their stunt driver was. Mm-hmm. They need they stunt their stunt driver whoever or, did the well, choreography I, I, I and came say, up with I that. I should say drivers. Yeah, okay. so I'm sure yeah, there sure. were multiple drivers. All those stunt drivers, every single one of them. Yeah. they they need they deserve every bit of excellent work they get, and we they oh my man oh I, they deserve massive credit for oh yeah like you see it they did it like yeah. they they just did it in this movie yeah. Um, one thing that Fast and the Furious has gotten to the point of in, in all their chase scenes now, and it's why I don't bother with those movies anymore, is they look so fake. 
yeah. and so cutty and so stupid. This movie, what you're watching, they just fucking did it. They yeah. crashed these cars. They blew them up. Oh, yeah. They just yeah. did this shit, and it makes such a better movie watching experience when right. you're like, oh, my God, this looks like it could be on the fucking news. Yeah. But it's yeah. obviously insanely super skillful. I, I, I mean, that, that, like that. that's the exact feeling I got um, during the shopping center scene when he's in that parking lot and he's trying to get away. Yes. Like, yeah, that that looked like that actually fucking happened. Mm. There was no, oh yeah, we're just gonna jump cut and cut away. Like no, yeah, no they, CGI, tra- no, no CGI traffic around no, them. No, 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 no CGI. And like, and that's what they're doing in a lot of chase scenes now. Yeah, is they can make a car that looks really real, but not. There's just not something a little quite, bit yeah. off. Maybe maybe it's not reflecting right light light just yeah. right or. Maybe it just looked a little bit. You can see just a little bit of superimposing. Mm-hmm. Like no, in this movie, I never once got the feeling that what I was looking at was CGI. Like it looked like they just had a, a dude on a crane and he's just running alongside it and just filming it as they're as they're weaving in and out of traffic. This is it's very comparable to um, Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, where the where they use the CGI. To enhance like the flames and to make the uh, the sandstorm, t- sandstorm and stuff like and that, and yeah. enhance the explosions. That's all cool, but because but, real explosions aren't that awesome looking. Right. But when they had, but all those but, cars were there, and there were people strapped not, to fucking poles. Not all those cars were there. Um, I do remember seeing the making of. There were like maybe four or five, and then the rest in the background were the background. Were, yeah, cars. yeah. Granted, but the yeah. main focus, mm-hmm. they really put Tom Hardy on the edge of a spear and just had him yeah. waving back and forth, and it's like holy crap. And yeah, that's definitely the feel I got here. Like there was no, there was no trickery, there was no fakery. I mean, obviously, when um, I, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to spoil too much. But there, there were moments where obviously it, it had to be CGI. Oh well, yeah, yeah. But there's, there's, um, they're always going to use CGI in movies to enhance and things like that. But I mean. They really crashed these cars. They're, yeah. They weren't... No, no, there was real damage Oof. to these things, man. It was cool. Uh, like when they robbed that armored truck and that Marine mm-hmm. or that soldier boy crashes into him with his, mm-hmm. his rant. Like that, that, that really That looked happened. like it fucking hurt. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. there was some jostling there. Somebody's jimmies were rustled. <laughs> Several times over at that point. Yeah. Uh, if I had any, any gripes that I have with this movie are really minor. Um, like the gun that, uh, the soldier pulled out the pistol, it looked, it looked, that looked like a toy. I'm trying to remember what he pulled out. He pulled what? out, he pulled out a handgun and it was, it was brown. Like it was a light brown, like a, a sand color. My problem with it wasn't that I, I knew, I, I know what kind of gun it was. Yeah. And my problem with it wasn't the fact that he had a brown one. It was that that's not totally legal. I think was what I was kind of annoyed with. I, I was annoyed by how faked it looked. Like it, that was the one thing. Is it that a was, vector? I'm trying to remember. I I, um, I I don't know. Like I admittedly do not know my weapons that well. Yeah. I, um. The uh, the other thing I think I took small issue with is why did he have an SMG in his passenger seat? That's what it was. He pulled out a fucking SMG. That's where I was like, what the fuck? Like I I don't know. Maybe they were they didn't go into it, and he was supposed to be. Uh, like an undercover, he's like a, a I mean, an FBI agent. Or that's very, very possible. Anything like that, especially like that. Especially given the way Baby took notice of him, because if you if you're paying attention while the movie is, <laughs> he, he looks at this guy. He's like, and you can see if by his expression, like this guy is going to be trouble. But that was one thing that was like, why? Why does he like? I can see him having the pistol. The pistol makes complete sense. Why did he have an SMG? You know why? Why was that there? Yeah. And it was it was just weird. I kind of that's how I kind of wrote it off. Um, was that he? It wasn't simply just some soldier boy. This dude, he was either uh, FBI, and they might have been even trying to catch this group of constant bank robbers, or he he, he had something to do with. He was there for a reason, right? And that's like you pointed out. Like they look at him like, oh fuck. Like some that's gonna be a, he's gonna be an issue. Yes. Yeah. yeah like which, ba- well, baby looks at him. The rest of them aren't paying attention. No, they don't they're see. focused on robbing the armored car. But baby looks and like, yeah, that's gonna be an issue. He's gonna be a problem. And you know what? He totally was. Mm-hmm. Um, little minor spoiler: when he took that the, that Chevy Avalanche they were driving, and he he hit it and drove along that fucking wall. 
that the, that retainer. Oh, that wall. was so fucking cool. There, there's a point he's trying to get away from this guy, and this guy's in his way. He's got, I think he's driving a big Dodge Ram. I don't know the exact model, and they're driving a, a Chevy Avalanche, and he he's like the guy, the soldier boy is in the way, and so Baby takes it along the backside of like along the backside of, of the parking lot. There's a retainer wall, and there's a little like there's a an arc where it goes from the parking lot on up to the wall in a, in a curve, and he takes it along that curve, drives along the retainer wall, and gets away. And it's like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. It was that that chase scene was again awesome, and it wasn't. I didn't expect it. Yeah, uh, no. because of the way it started with this dude who just pulls up and whips out. Uh, looks like honestly, the first gun looks like a Glock. Yeah, I mean, whips it, this fucking pistol out, fires, misses. I I I don't think you would miss, but that's just me. But that 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 scene, the only thing that really bothered me was where did the SMG come from and why did he have it? Yeah, uh, I I'm still willing to you know write it off as that was somebody who was there specifically for that job. But um, yeah, this the chase was so fucking cool. The chase that is really like the oh, yeah, main attraction. Straight, straight up pulls out an MP uh, was fucking it? submachine gun. I think it was a uh, yeah. Yeah, he just pulls out a fucking something. It even has like the, the the carrying strap. It's like, what is this guy doing? Who is this guy? <laughs> and you don't really like you don't really see him again. He pops up on the news later. Um, speaking of which, Joe, his his a uh, his um, adoptive father, foster father. That dude is so cool. He's oh a, yeah, the there's little, the the, little old black a little guy. bit of babies. His side story is he's his foster father's a. Uh, uh, an older black dude. He's blind. And no, no, he can see. He's deaf. Oh, he's deaf. Yeah, yes. no, he can see. Fine. He's the deaf. the other thing that can happen. Um, <laughs> to your God head. damn it, Luke. He's he's deaf. But uh, the the fact that you know, baby does not speak very much in this movie. No. And then he's doing sign language with um with Joe. Joe. Yeah. And then the way I loved the inclusion of baby mixing music. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just. It was so so good. That was that was actually stuff that I didn't expect to care about was just so cool. That was a neat little touch, and it came out of left field. Like, oh, that's interesting. And then to find out that he has tinnitus, which I can completely relate to because I have tinnitus, not nearly as bad as that, but I do have it. And um, that was that was really cool. And then him going to the diner and meeting Deborah, that that was kind of neat. But it was like I said, their whole their whole arc because it's sort of a guy falls in love with girl thing. It, it wasn't. Hand fisted. It wasn't fucking shoved in your face and down your throat. Yeah. It's a really nice and sweet interaction between the two of them. Mm. So, and um, I did because I'm just that into it. I, the first gun the guy pulled out was an H and K forty five. Yeah, pistol. Um, which you can get in that sand brown color. I yeah. kind of, I actually like that version of the pistol. I'm not. And saying, then I, he did fucking whip out an MP five. <laughs> Yeah, like, well, <laughs> which with full auto which my first thought was is does this movie take place in texas and does this guy have a fucking uh a stamp that he can own this weapon i don't know i mean <laughs> military do if he's a military guy which they they did mention that he was he might get I mean, military does have a slightly higher clearance for gun no. ownership right no not uh not like not i mean once not, you're home not necessarily he would have to go and get um get licensed for it which right. is possible especially right. if if this takes place in texas or something like that it wouldn't be that difficult to get a stamp to own a full auto uh weapon but there's no way in any state that he would be allowed to carry that weapon loaded in his vehicle as his concealed carry weapon just no you can't do that yeah it, it, is, it is unless he is like a an FBI agent, agent yeah, he, or, or some kind of like homeland security, yeah. law enforcement, something like that. Which is, I, I still say that's my. I, I, I wonder if they had a side story where they were being watched, or there's a whole organization. I don't know, but I, I mean, it's very possible. Um, something I mean, that might have been cut. Who knows? Yeah, I, I the still it it the way that scene happens. I love the fact that they did, even though it's like, why the fuck does this guy have it? But it was just a, oh my god, here we go again. Yeah, in the movie, which still just oh, so good. I mean, yeah, the the plot wasn't it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. It was it was enjoyable. But it's like what I it said, needed to be, I think. Yeah, exactly. The plot was it was secondary to what was going on, like what mm. was happening on screen at any given time. The plot wasn't important. Now it it wasn't 
the levels of bad on par with something like Shoot 'Em Up. Oh Ooh. God, no, no, Which it's is, nothing. Shoot 'Em Up is a dumb, cool action movie, right? Um, similar to like Expendables and those kind of just. I, I, you know what? I would say it's worse than Expendables. It, it's definitely worse, but right. it's so much more fun. Yeah, um, but, but this movie is kind of in the similar vein in that. It's nonstop action. Yeah, it's nonstop. I mean, there is stops, I mean, but no, there there stops. There's definitely stops, but the action that is there mm-hmm. is so high octane, so it's ha- fast, so it's amazing. It's like yes, but the story is so much better than oh. a senator is trying to get a kidney cancer or some shit. Prostitutes pregnant because he's got a rare bone disease and he needs yeah. blood transfusions from his baby. Oh. Oh, so bad, but so, so good. Stupid. So ta- it's like that Geostorm movie coming out. They've built satellites to control the weather that have been hijacked by a uh, terrorist organization, but at the same time, someone's trying to assassinate the president. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid, but I can't wait. You know what? I'm going to go see that. I know. I got to yeah, see it. No, I'm um, down for seeing that. There's one – the one thing that I did kind of uh, – it's a moment that made me go, I don't know about that. But the way it played out, I was like, okay, that's really cool, and that was awesome. Um, there's a there's a uh, a turn of one of the characters, yeah, and I won't go into it more than that. But when it happens, I was like, really, I don't see this character doing it. But it played out so well, yeah, yeah, that I was like, okay, yeah, I've totally, I can forgive it because it was ended up awesome. Yeah, and, I think yeah. yeah, I know, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. It, it wasn't, I didn't expect it. I didn't either, yeah. but the, the fact that it happened, I was mm. still okay with. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, seriously, guys, go watch that movie. Take Rent my it. advice. Rent it. Buy it. Check it out at your local library. Your library has it. I don't know. Cause some libraries are cool as fuck like that. I don't yeah. Know. And see, see this movie. Support it. Edgar Wright made a fantastic flick. Like I said, I feel I feel so good, so I confident have, uh, saying it is his best flick ever. I'm I'm still sad, a little sad. I didn't get to see Edgar Wright's Ant Man, but at the same time, I I got a good Ant Man movie, and he also went and made this movie. Yeah, th- and this is seriously a f- this makes me this is a mass totally happy. I feel it. good saying this is a masterpiece. I'd say yeah, it's yeah. a it's a movie like when we first saw like we said John Wick, Kingsman, yeah, these other movies where you come out of it and like, wow, where did that come from? Yeah, especially I I, I still feel that way, especially about John Wick. Yeah, I mean. To the like, I, I've seen a lot of Keanu movies. Some of them it was hit. A, some it was of them a return missed. of Keanu. Yeah, it was out of nowhere. It was an action movie that could have been really just like shoot 'em up, dumb. Yeah, and was no, not. no, it has it has a good engaging story, mm-hmm. and there's just so much created really... a world that you want. Like I, I walked out of the first John Wick, like I need to know more about this yes. fucking assassin organization. What's up with these coins? Exactly. Who, what is, is every... this hotel? Yeah. Why is everyone? What? And then you walked out of the sequel, going, "Am I an assassin too?" Because apparently everyone's an assassin. Everyone knows because uh, everyone at the end of John Wick Two is getting their phone going messages. off, and they're just looking at him like, "Uh." I, I kind of love the idea that that's the world they live in, almost yeah. like uh, Wanted, where just everybody's an assassin, and you just have to fucking try and survive. Except Wanted is a terrible flick. Wanted is a terrible flick. Yeah. More of uh, what the concept of Wanted should have been. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Although I got to say, the first time I saw Wanted, I did enjoy it. I I enjoyed I, it until I heard from a friend what the comic book was, yeah. and what the movie could have been, and I was like, "Oh well, fuck!" Now I feel cheated. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's kind of like like if you go into Netflix's Death Note without knowing anything about the manga or you the might, anime, you might enjoy. It's it. gonna it's it. I've I've read that it's a good film if you know nothing about. About the source material, but if you know anything about the source material, it's fucking really bad. Garbage. Yeah. Which, I mean, that's kind of how things are going. Part of the course, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Like with the Dark Tower. I'm sure that if you know nothing about the Dark Tower, yeah. and you go in... You might enjoy that movie. Yeah, you, you might find I've that I've heard movie the movie still cool. drags, and it's still way, way too short. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the characters aren't the characters they're supposed to be. No. So, but, we're I, not, but it's Idris Elba, so I'm sure you could go watch that movie like, hey, Idris Elba was awesome. Dude, I gotta say, I'll watch anything with Idris Elba in it. Oh, yeah. I mean, is he narrating a Chinese menu at some backwoods <laughs> town? I, I, I Okay, I'm there. I don't even care. He's sitting there reading about, like, you know... Kung Pao Chicken, like I don't know why, but I want to hear him do it. You know, <laughs> yes. I, I, and maybe, maybe I he, hope his... you know what? Maybe he kills somebody with a chopstick. That's that's awesome too. 
Idris Elba is fucking awesome in anything. I hope his part in uh, Thor Ragnarok isn't too small. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's he's a side character in the Thor movies, but I've always liked Heimdall. Yeah, I like his character. I yeah. like. I just. I hope he gets more. Mm-hmm. I, it looks like he's gonna kick some ass in this. Although I do take slight a slight. Uh, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Issue with him being Heimdall in the first place because that means we can't get John Stewart. <laughs> we can't. It's true. We can't get. A, we can't get I an mean, Idris Elba. Why, John you Stewart. can't say can't. Like I. No, I think I can say can't right, because yeah, I'm yeah, pretty no, sure there's contractual no. obligations in the way there. I don't know. Like it's conflicts him. of interest, and yeah, no, you, you can't, can't do that because uh, I want to see him continue to be Heimdall. But yeah. I I would love. I, I st- he is still my ideal John Stewart. Yeah. I'm. I, I don't care. He he is. That's who I want to play my Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. But I know that'll never happen. Yeah. So, all right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and cut off there. I think I think we've uh, go see Baby Driver. Time. Fuck EA. Fuck it. Go see uh, Baby Driver. Doom. John Wick. John Wick Two. Uh, the the Raid. The Raid Two. If you haven't seen these awesome fucking movies, yeah. support movies that aren't you know like the big hyped up movies. Yeah, because I mean, you you will find so many gems. You find some good shit. Yeah, I mean, go see movie. You know. well, how do we even go see John Wick? I don't even remember how well, that came. Well, about. it was one of the movies. Same thing with um, the Kingsman, where we started the the buzz around that movie when people started seeing the reviews of it. I or think the review copies. Didn't we? Didn't we watch a trailer? Started, and go okay. We got. We go did see watch this. the trailer. Yeah. yeah. See, that's the thing. When we went and saw Kingsman, we were just like, "Let's go watch it." I don't even know what it's about. Let's just go see it. I saw the trailer for Kingsman sold me on it. it I, did, I, the hell I never saw the trailer. I didn't expect it to be that good. I never saw the trailer. I think I just went because we, that's what we were doing that day. Mm-hmm. You know, we all had the day off. Like fuck it, let's go see Kingsman. You were like, it looks good. Like all right, and then yeah, we were fucking pleasantly surprised. And it's oh, like yeah. it's the same thing with Baby Driver. Like I never saw a trailer for it. I just bought it on Luke's recommendation because he wouldn't shut up about it. And so, it, like I said, it, it holds the distinction for being the first UHD movie I've ever purchased. I mean, I've rented UHD movies, but this one I actually bought. Yeah. And I I don't regret buying it. I do not at all. And it's one of those things I'm going to watch at least five more times. Yeah. Like, it's it, it's good. It's really, movie. really good, guys. So go see Baby Driver and go watch The Raid and all these other flicks we've mentioned, go see them and if then, you haven't seen them. You and if what? you have, watch them anyway because they're still good. Oh, yeah. And I, I want to go back and watch The Raid 2 now because talking about that, the fight scenes in that movie just... It's... it's it, 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 From what you described, I really do expect like the hallway scene from Daredevil, the mm. stairwell scene from Daredevil, the jail scene from Daredevil. Like that's that's the kind of level I'm going to expect. Or the hallway scene from Old Boy, where you know he, he's to, fighting. It is to hype it up a little bit, and we've had this conversation a little bit. It is like um, the first raid is uh, there's a lot more running away yeah, yeah, in I that mean, movie. It's it's not it, but the fight scenes. The fight scenes are, are amazing. So good. It's not a movie where that movie wasn't a. True traditional kung fu movie where you expect no, to go, it, and these people are going to go and fight and for yeah, their guys. Honor, blah, blah, straight blah. up, it's not a kung fu movie, so no, don't go into it expecting that. Movie. Spect, uh, it's more of an action thriller, I'd say. Yes, yeah. like there's a lot of tense moments. There's a lot of holy shit, what's going to happen next moments. There are some explosions. There's people getting shot, but the the fight scenes that are in it are definitely like I I I want to say they're like Ip, Ip Man level. Fight yeah, scenes. That, like, they're they're that good. That, that stunt I would, crew is fantastic. Yeah, like oh, those guys deserve credit too. Yeah, so, and they're the guys who did uh, uh, Daredevil, right? Um, and the just for the raid two, it's where they changed it. Instead of being that more thriller, they went all out on the action yeah. fight to make it a more kung fu esque action movie. Um, and it's just brutal fight after brutal fight. So I'm gonna have to go watch that. Uh, yeah probably maybe even tonight overnight since mm-hmm. I'm off tonight but seriously we are going to cut it off there yes we're, we're running longer check than out the... uh, social media for us Instagram Facebook like us on YouTube uh, subscribe. subscribe to the channel yeah. um, just throw a like up there so we get you know a little bit <laughs> so we know someone's watching someone's listening you know Yell at me on Twitter; it's fine. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll accept it. Uh, Ungodly geeks on all three on all the platforms. Uh, and we're the only ones. Yeah, we really are. Like it's amazing. Like you search <laughs> Ungodly geeks on Google and Bing. 
Uh, and all, Bing! And Bing. Like, I, I include it because uh, it's still moderately relevant. It's definitely significantly more relevant than, than Yahoo. So <laughs> I went on Ash Or Jeeves. Alta Vista or Please Ash, Ash Jeeves. Jeeves. Yeah, like Excuse you? <laughs> Duck, although DuckDuckGo. Uh, I don't know what the fuck DuckDuckGo even is. It's uh, basically Google. Don't explain it. Let's <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's actually nice. It, oh. it, it, it's, uh, it's Google, but anonymous. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's it for us. We're going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, thanks for, for listening. <laughs> no, Bing is for porn. Uh, but, okay, yeah, that's true. No, no, Bing is oh, so good for porn, guys. <laughs> thanks Seriously, for listening, guys. Use Bing for porn. Uh, their video search, top fucking notch. Yep. Microsoft did that one really well. <laughs> that was their first job. Um, but, yeah, that's it for us, guys. We're going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. Go see Baby Driver. Have a good one.